Okay, so this is problem nine from the 2015 Spring Amatic Student Math League Contest. Question says the graph of xy minus 6x plus 4y equals 36 is symmetric with respect to pq at some point. We want to find p times q. Again, here probably what's going on is we're trying to find pq. You can find pq instead of just giving you the point and checking if it's symmetric. You do, do a product of those um, to see what's happening. Okay. So to do this, we got to think about what being symmetric with respect to PQ means. So symmetric with respect to a point here. Well, what that's going to mean here, let's do it this way, is that if we have, let's say, P plus A, Q plus B. So we add A to P b to q so we add a to the x component b to the y component say on say the graph of this that means that this implies that we can subtract the a and subtract the b here so we can get p minus a q minus b on the graph so you can get that's sort of really what we're saying so now we can work this out algebraically here um, it'll work out. It's a little bit of a mess, but we can do it. So I'm just going to plug in, um, let's suppose P plus A, Q plus B is on the graph. So we know that, that sort of if we have P plus A, Q plus B, we'll get P minus A, Q minus B. So let's suppose we have X, Y, that's P plus A, Q plus B, minus 6X, that's P plus A, plus 4Y, that's Q plus B, if that equals 36, so we have this point, so pick an A and B where this is a point on the graph. Well, then let's pick, we get this other point on the graph. So we get this statement and we get, let's write it over here maybe, we get P minus A, Q minus B, that's X, Y, minus 6 times P minus A plus 4 times q minus b, that equals 36 as well. So we basically are replacing a with negative a, b with negative b to go from this side to this side. Now let's just multiply these out and see what happens here. So we get pq plus pb plus aq plus ab minus 6p minus 6a plus 4q plus 4b equals 36. And on this right sort of column, we get PQ minus PB minus AQ plus AB minus 6P plus 6A plus 4Q minus 4B equals 36. So expand those out. Now, what's going to happen here is a, a lot of these terms are the same on both sides, particularly the ones that don't involve A or B or have an even number of A's and B's. So what we're going to do is, if I look here, um, I can keep, let's just underline that the ones that are the same. So PQ matches up in both. AB matches up in both. We have a PB and a PB, but the signs changed. So we have a minus 6P and a minus 6P. Uh, we have a plus 4Q and a plus 4Q. And then really sort of the 36s are the same. So what I'm going to do is move all the stuff I underlined to the right-hand side. And what I get is PB plus that A, AQ minus 6A plus 4B, that should equal 36 minus PQ minus AB plus 6P minus 4Q. So I just move all the underlying stuff in the red to the right. Let's maybe just make a break up here. This one. Um, I'm going to get negative PB minus AQ plus 6A minus 4B. That's going to be 36. Let's see, plus PB. Whoops, no, not plus PB. Sorry, I want to move the red stuff over. 36 minus PQ minus AB plus 6P plus 4Q. Here, except it's not plus 4q, it should be minus 4q. It was plus 4, so it changes to a minus 4q. Now, if I look at these, 
this right hand side, if I did this right, should match this right hand side. 36 minus PQ minus AB plus 6P minus 4Q. That means the left hand sides are equal. And so, get rid of this divider here. What I get then is PB plus AQ minus 6A plus 4B, the left hand side over on the left, should equal negative PB minus AQ plus 6A minus 4B. Now if we look at this, these are almost the same as just the signs change on each side. So what that tells me here is that what I get is PB plus AQ minus 6A plus 4B equals negative PB plus AQ minus 6A plus 4B. So this whole left hand side equals negative of itself. Well, there's only one number that that's true for and that's zero. So what I get from all this is that PB plus AQ minus 6A plus 4B equals zero. And now what happens here is this is supposed to work for every A and B that are on the graph here. So there's some A and B that gives us a point of the graph. It should work for the other A and B, or negative A, negative B as well. So in some sense, this is a polynomial in A and B. So what I have is I need to have B times P plus 4 plus A times Q minus 6 has to be 0. But this has to work for every A and B particular if there's an A and B that are not zero, this will work, which is sort of the assumption we'll work off of. And that means that P plus four has to equal zero and Q minus six has to equal zero. So we get P is negative four, Q is six. So PQ is negative 24 and our answer is B negative 24. Okay, so that works. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit slicker way of what I maybe actually would have done here. Um, so I've got xy minus 6x plus 4y. So we have xy minus 6x plus 4y equals 36. So another approach here is if you look at this equation, you can actually solve this for y. So this is probably not as robust of an approach if you have sort of a more complicated equation here, but it'll work in this case. So what I can get is y times x plus 4. I can do the xy plus 4y equals 36, move this 6x to the other side. And then I get y equals 36 plus 6x over x plus 4. Note this is y equals 6 times, well, x plus 6 over x plus 4. So I have a nice function. y is a function of x. And if I think about the graph of this, I can do sort of a graph here do an xy graph. Well, what I get, let's see, at negative 4, I'm going to get a vertical asymptote. So at negative 4, oh, terrible. There, let's make that actually straight. Do, 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 do. There we go. So something roughly vertical. And then what we can think about is if x gets really, really big, um, x plus 6 and x plus 4, effectively, that ratio is going to be 1, whether x is positive or negative. And so this is going to go to 6 in the y. I'm going to get a horizontal asymptote at x equals 6 here. Now, when I graph this, let's see, if I put in a really, really big x, let's see, x plus 6 over x plus 4, that's going to be slightly bigger than 1, means it's going to be slightly bigger than 6. And so my graph is going to have to look like this. It can never, so if this was equal to 6, x plus 6 would have to equal x plus 4, but that never happens. And so my graph is going to have to do something like this. It's going to have to go to one of the asymptotes there. If I plug in something negative, let's see, I'm going to get something, let's see, negative. Let's think about this. I'll get negative x, so something, yeah, so the bottom will be bigger if I plug in a really, really negative x because it's sort of subtracting these off. And it's going to be slightly less than 6 or probably an easier way to think about it now that I'm doing this is that negative 4, if I have x a little bit bigger than negative 4, that makes positive times positive on top and a positive on the bottom, so it should go to positive infinity. If I'm to the left of negative 4, I'll get a negative on the bottom. This should go to negative infinity. So my graph is going to look something like this. 
And this point here in the middle, that's her point of symmetry. That's the point negative 4, 6. Now, you also don't need to graph this like that. You've presumably got a calculator with you. So you could just, once you solve for y, do 6 times x plus 6, divide by x plus 4, go to your graph, and you can see this hyperbola here. Not a really good zoom here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit better view. So there we can see sort of the hyperbola, and this point in the middle should be 4, 6, which from the graph is a little bit tricky to, to see, but if you trace, and you can see sort of I'm going negative 2, negative 3, whoop, negative 4, I went to negative 41. So I could zoom in and find out that that is actually negative 4. Um, and then if I did like a really, really big x here, or I just have to sort of go out here, I can see I'm getting, uh, as I go out, 6.5. Here, those would be my guesses. And if I'm not sure about, you know, is, is it really going to go to 6, what I could do, let's quit out of this, do variables, y variables function. Let's do y1 of 9999. So let's, no, another 9, doesn't matter. If I do that, I get something slightly bigger than 6. That makes me think, oh, that horizontal asymptote is probably 6. If I do second entry, I could put a negative in front of this. And you see something slightly less than 6, 5.998. And then the other idea was that negative 4. So I can't put in negative 4 because I'll get a 0. But let's do negative 3.99. That gives me something really, really big here. And if I get rid of that negative, I should also get something big here. So the negative 3.99, that's to the right of negative 4. That's positive. Now I should get something negative. Oops, sorry. wasn't really get rid of the negative. It shouldn't be negative 3.999. It should be negative 4.01. Missed my decimal point. If I do that, it should switch from 12.06 to negative 11.94 down here. So I went from positive to negative. You can kind of verify this.